Good morning. I'm Councilmember Ku, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. We are joined by Council Members Palmer, Mendez, and Rose. Today, we will be hearing and voting on the proposed 697-seat uh, intermediate school siting in Councilmember Van Brimmer's uh, district. The proposed school uh, will be located within the Sunnyside Gardens Historic District. There is currently an existing garage on the privately owned site. The School Construction Authority is, is, is requesting that the Council approve the site locate, uh, selection for a new school on this site under Session 1732 uh, of the New York School Construction um, Authority Act. Council Member Rambima supports approval of this application. We are hearing the proposed destination P. Consider. Uh, we have uh, Kelly Murphy from SCA and Michael Masarula from SCA uh, to testify. Please identify yourself and start. Yeah. Up there, guys. Good morning. I'm Michael Mirasola. I'm the Director of External Affairs for the School Construction Authority. Uh, good morning. I'm Kelly Murphy. I'm the Director of Real Estate Services for the Construction School Construction Authority. Um, if you want, if I didn't know if you have paper copies of this, but they asked um, that I present some um, images of the site, its location, and of the building. Um, good morning again. Uh, the New York City School Construction Authority has undertaken the site selection process for a new public school facility on a site on Block 125, Lot 10, in Queens. The site contains approximately 25,000 square feet of lot area located at 38-04 48th Street at the corner of 48th Street and Barnett Avenue. The site is privately owned and contains a vacant two-story parking garage with vacant ground floor retail. It's located within the Sunnyside neighborhood within Queens Community District 2 and Commun Community School District Number 30. Under the proposed project, the, the SCA would acquire the site and construct a new approximately 690-seat intermediate school facility. The notice of filing for the site plan was published in the New York Post and the city record on September 20th, 2016. Queens Community Board 2 and the Community Education Council were also notified of the site plan on the 20th and we're asked to hold public hearings on the proposed site plan. Um, the SCAA had three community meetings with Community Board 2 in September, October, and November of 2016, and the Community Board held their public hearing on November 3rd, 2016, and voted in favor of the site selection. The Community Education Council number 30 held their hearing on October 17th, 2016, and voted in favor, and the City Plan Commission submitted comments in support of the site selection. The SCA has considered all comments received on the proposed site plan and affirms the site plan pursuant to section 1731 of the Public Authorities Act law, excuse me, in accordance with section 1732 of the PAL, the SCA submitted the proposed site plan to the mayor and city council by letter dated November 13, 2017. We look forward to the subcommittee's favorable consideration of the proposed site plan and prepared to ask your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to ask maybe a few questions. Yeah. So, what is the purchase price for this uh, site? Sorry, sir. Excuse me. I, what was that? I didn't hear you. Could you repeat the question? I said, what is the purchase price? The purchase price. Uh, for this. Actually, I don't I'm have that. sorry. I, I don't have to have follow it. up with we'll have to follow our attorney up. on that. I don't know that. So, this site uh, is a garage, right? It's a, pub, a private pub, a parking garage. Yes, it's been vacant for how many, four years? How many spaces, yes? It's been, it's been vacant for four years, so uh, it... Oh, it's vacant. Presently, it's been, it's vacant. Prior to it being a parking, I'm sorry, after it was a parking garage, it was turned into, I think the last use was a, a pool hall, a billiard hall. And in the interim, since it's been a parking garage, it's had many different real retail uses. Uh, there, if you see the site, and we do have some photos, yeah, there are several retail stores that were created on the ground floor on both elevations. So it has not been a parking garage for some time. Hmm. So is this, it's not really a, a parking garage, you know? No, not, no. no, it hasn't been for quite some time. 
So you have no opposition from the neighborhood people? Well, there are people who have expressed concern, and uh, not from the parking garage issue, but there are people because of the uh, historic issues involved, and we've worked with, we were, we we're committed to working with them to, uh, uh, to create something there that will be appropriate and will harken back to the original uh, garage, which has gone, undergone extensive yeah. renovations oh, over the decades. Oh, I the original I garage was built, I believe, in 1927. In those days, it had turrets, and it had a lot of brickwork, and it, those are all, all those details are gone. So, uh, we, so uh, we will try and work to uh, bring some of those details back in the, uh, in the proposed school. There, if you take oh, okay. a, that's no. the that's what it looks like today. This is along Barnett Avenue. This is along uh, 48th Street. I'm sorry, I hate uh, this is along 48th Street. This is the view along 48th Street. The previous one is along Barnett Avenue. And then there's uh, this is the surrounding neighborhood. This is along the Barnett Avenue is along the Long Island Railroad tracks, so the industrial use is there. And then there's some interior shots of the building to show kind of the constriction we had in terms of height and putting fitting all the uh, venting and school uses it doesn't fit and then the structural issues if you see the one on the left you could see cracks in the beams and such so um, we provided all that information to the state historic office when we were working with them to try to see if we could reuse the site we weren't able to okay. council member mendez you have questions yes uh, thank you mr chair so can you elaborate on what are some of the um I forgot the word you actually used, but some of the preservation concerns? The preservation concerns, in, as I said, in 1927, this was built as a garage. And in the old days, the orig if you, it, we don't have photographs of the uh, original garage of 1927. There was a tower and uh, a lot of uh, brickwork. But in, in the meantime, all of those details are now gone. And so the community, in some way, I, I don't want to speak for them, but what they wanted us to do was somehow or another go back to that or preserve what's there. But as you can see, what's there is nothing like what was built. Those windows were not there. The storefronts were not there. The, uh, and the building has, undergone, has experienced significant deterioration over the decades. So what we plan to do is to work, we've committed with the council member and with the state historic folks, to work with the community, put a community group together, and to uh, have them sit with our architectural team to uh, build a building that, that is in, I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with the Sunnyside community, but there are low rise uh, brick uh, to one, one and two family homes. So we're going to build something that both works with that community and harkens back to the original uh, design of the uh, garage. I don't see it in here. How many stories is the proposed building? That we're not 100. We don't really know yet, Council Member, because uh, we uh, have been playing with several designs so we have not because we haven't acquired the property we haven't been able to go into design so we're ex Likely four stories. probably a four-story building four to five, and four can five. you tell me is that the only uh, blocks and lots on that block it looks like it's a triangle block right. and it doesn't look like there it's got a lot of uh, width there, or depth at the if part. you look at the on the on the bottom of that drawing our obviously our space is the pink one the there are some uh, homes that back on to our lot and then there's an apartment building on that large triangle you can come see so I'm, I'm I'm sorry the pink one is your site yes yes so the the pictures you're showing us doesn't even look it it looks yeah no 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 that's that's a that's an apartment building yeah yeah right there you can see the apartment. you see the apartment building on the right hand side and that's you're looking at it from another one the the triangle that you pointed to is actually that apartment building up there in the corner right there that's it do you have views of this side the barnet 
This is on 48th Street here? That's 48th Street. And if you look at the photograph on the left, the, uh, those are the backyards of the buildings, that, that, of, the, of the homes uh, that, would, that are joined the lot on that side. Barnett is the photograph on the, that's Barnett. This is Barnett. And the other side is 48th on the Street. Left, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's 48th, that's 48th Street. Street. And this is the surrounding neighborhood. And this is the okay. surrounding neighborhood. Okay. All right, yeah, we are also joined by Council Member Levin. And can I, since I'm still asking oh, questions. Ahead, yeah. <laughs> a six, a 697 seats. Right, approximately somewhere. We, again, we haven't designed it yet, so we don't know exactly okay. the number yet. We don't Would have number. this building, school building, have an auditorium, a lunchroom, a gymnatorium? What, what kind of other we, features? Again, we haven't designed it, but we are required to put in a lunchroom, a, cafe, a, a kitchen, a, at least a gymnatorium. And we would love, we're trying very hard to, uh, to add recre outdoor recreational space, a, a, back, a yard for the children to play in. And we'll we have can. all of the standard, uh, standard uh, requirements for a middle school, which would be science labs, music rooms, uh, art rooms, et cetera. Middle school, 6th, 7th, 8th, or 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th? Probably 5th, 6th. I think it's 6th, 7th, 8th. 6th through 8th. 6th to 8th. Thank you. Council Member Rose. Um, presently in that building, um, are there apartments above? No. The, no. no, it's vacant. Right? It is so vacant. Is, it's, is, it's always been the commercial. The whole structure is vacant. Yes, it's always been a commercial establishment. Okay, thank you. Does it have a playground? Is, it, yeah. is it large? The school? Yeah, in, in the new construction. The new construction? The new construction, like we said, will be four or five stories tall. Yeah, does it include a playground for schools to play around? An outdoor playground or no? You understand? No. A playground, I'm sorry. We think, we think that we could fit it along the back, along where the houses are in the lower part of the... We do manual. believe we'll be able to put a playground in, yes. Hmm. And that's, uh, again... Where it's going to go, we'll wait and see because we're going to sit with the community and try and design something that works for them. And, you know, we're, we have proximity to neighbors. We want to do something that is considerate with them. So we want to, we'll, yes, we're not sure exactly where. Okay. Um, are, those, are, are um, those houses um, uh, uh, right against the, the building? The, 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 on the street side, you will you just go back. I can, yeah, we, oh. there are backyards along there. So the homes themselves do not abut the, the structure. They are between the school, the proposed school, and the, and the house. There's, each one of those has a backyard. They have a backyard. See a so little on the photo Do on the you left. have enough room to build a, a buffer zone? Uh, because you know, in terms of noise, in terms of sort of privacy. Um, Those are things. Do you, have you taken into consideration a, a buffer zone? Those are things that we will work out with the community and with our architects when we get into design. We, are, we do do that as a rule uh, when we do build our schools. For instance, if we put the back of the school right there and we move, say, the playground to, the, to another side, you wouldn't have the noise of the children in the playground. And the school, ele the school elevation would probably not have windows on that elevation because it is a lot line, and I don't think you're allowed to put windows on a lot line. Oh. So, you, so the school would be, would be, it would be much quieter, let's say, than the traffic going by. So the school would not be in, in impacting the community in that way. Now, if we sat with the community and they said, we know we prefer the playground there, we could probably put a wall between the playground and the, and the folks' backyard. Mm -hmm. So we would, again, mm -hmm. work with them to mm -hmm. come up with something that impacts them as little as possible. And so the buffer zone won't impact um the footprint of the school, will it? Well, or, we, we or don't or have a lot. Of, it's not a big lot. have to no. go higher than... It's not a large lot. So we would, uh, we would like to use the whole f footprint, of course. Mm -hmm. Would there be some sort of a step back? There could be. I, I, I don't know. If we had the room, sure. If not, we would have to put some sort of a noise abatement issue in there, a wall. 
or, or again, put the building right on the, on the line, on the lot, and then just build a, a wall there, such as similar to what's there now. There's a, uh, there's a brick wall that runs right down the property line at this time. So we'll have to wait and see. So I always have a little um, issue with this. We always vote before the design is, you know, has been rendered. And um, how much of a guarantee do, you know, do we have that this is going to be one built um, sort of contextually as requested by the community that, you know, um, the buffer will be, mm -hmm. you know, an actuality? Yeah. Um, well, I always, as a, a, a landmarks person, I always have, and schools, yeah. I always have some trepidation about how much actually, yeah, you know, gets put into the design. Well, um, not only do we have our commitment to you, we have our commitment to Council Member Van Bremer, we have our commitment to the community and the community board to work with them, mm -hmm. but we also, and our agreement that we've signed with the State Historic Office clears out, very clearly delineates what they expect of us as well from that point of view. Mm -hmm. So, and on top of all of that, I would love to share with you some of our designs one day that we have done, mm -hmm. which have been, uh, have taken the historic issues of, of schools. We've had schools where we've received uh, property, for instance, in Brooklyn, where there was an old, beautiful old church. And it was a vacant lot when we did it, but we put back something that harkened back to the design of the old church, and we did that with another school, and we've incorporated elements, for instance, of, the, of, of towers and uh, architectural elements from the old buildings that we have been able to uh, save, such as stained glass windows and things. And we've actually incorporated them, so we're really proud of our historic work. And we've I have to say, um, you did an annex to Curtis High School, mm -hmm. which I have no it melds with the no build, problem. With the community, doesn't it, it is contextually, you know, um, it, it's a wonderful, you know, piece of architecture. Um, my last question, um, and I think we're that's doing. While you're thinking, we're doing something right now. We we're in. We just put it out to bid in Jackson Heights. And it was a very similar situation where the community was concerned that what we were going to build was not contextually in, in sync with, the, with their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we put a committee together like we're going to do here, and we sat with them, and we had their input every step of the way down to the color of the brick and the actual stone work that is in it. And uh, we, we presented that to them, and they are thrilled with it. And it's going, it's actually just starting our construction now. So we're used to this kind of thing. Because the, um, the building that exists now doesn't have um, a lot of the, the historic elements that it originally mm -hmm. had, are you doing a complete tear down and yes. rebuild? Yes. Okay, so you're not, um, not there's nothing, frankly, the there really is, if you look at that, there's nothing left to save. Right. Okay. So uh, our president actually said she thinks that when all is said and done, what we build is going to look more like the original building than that does now. So uh, our, it's, we're probably going to hold this design in-house, and we're very excited about the opportunity to do something that's, that's going to make most people happy. <laughs> and I hope you put turrets on there. I love turrets. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any more questions from our members? Seeing none. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this item. Okay. Thank and you for I will seat. call a vote to approve this considered school siting application. Mm -hmm. Council, please call the vote. Ku. I will aye. Palmer. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Levin. Aye. Rose. Aye. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, the item is recommended for approval and referred to the full land use committee. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Yeah, uh, yeah I, we will uh, uh, hold the vote open for another 15 minutes. Uh, and Councilmember Mendez, I will hold the, hold the meeting. <laughs>